I, I would say at, as a startup, it's obviously so uh, motivationally driven that I always have to find my own path. And sometimes it's so hard when you don't have clearly rigid rules or next steps to take. Mm-hmm. Maybe thinking about um, other things, you know, what I'm going to have for lunch that day. I Probably social media, to be honest. I'm always like checking who's saying what on Facebook. I like to play with playing cards a lot. So I like to shuffle them a whole lot. And uh, so that's a little bit distracting sometimes. Quite distracted. We've all been there, staring off into space amidst a mountain of unfinished tasks, mind adrift with a dozen different trains of thought. No matter our intellectual abilities, nearly everyone struggles at one point or another with distraction and an inability to focus our mental energy. Your attention, for example, is mediated by unconscious forces. And you know that, you know that perfectly well. And this is another Freudian observation. As multitasking, stress, and digital distractions increasingly dominate our lives, it's no wonder that a stunning 84% of employees report feeling perpetually scattered on the job. Yet we're often too quick to chalk these lapses up to inherent flaws or disorders like ADHD. The truth is, while clinical issues exist, situational distractibility has become the norm in today's hyper-stimulating environment. Which means everyone's distracted. Blue. The increased use of mobile technology has conditioned us to multitask constantly. While it may be manageable to switch between simple, routine tasks briefly, regularly engaging in prolonged or frequent multitasking can leave our brains in a state of superficial thinking. Constantly bouncing from notification to notification, we learn to engage just enough with each new stimulus to minimize frustration without processing any of it comprehensively. All the knowledge that has been produced by humankind is at the end of your thumbs just by opening up your phone. And again, it's a huge privilege, uh, and we're very lucky to be in this kind of era. But on the other hand, just it's very hard to choose and it's very hard to decide where to start because we are constantly confronted with too much information. To regain control, it's important to first understand the common factors behind mental scattering so we don't blame ourselves unnecessarily. Clinical conditions can present differently than occasional distractibility. More importantly, we need to recognize that maintaining focus is a skill that requires strategies to overcome our triggers and habits. In the following sections, I'll explore some techniques for doing just that. We'll examine how journaling, changes to our workspaces, morning routines, and other tools can help train our minds to navigate distractions and consistently place our attention where it's needed most. I hope that with awareness and the application of the right practices, you'll feel empowered to stop losing time to mental fog and start optimizing your focus. So let's get into it. Taking control of our attention is crucial for both productivity and well-being. Although distractions are often situational, there are simple ways to minimize mental clutter. One powerful practice is daily journaling. I know what you might be thinking. Oh, more writing? I already have so much to do. However, hear me out. When we journal, the physical act of writing engages the logical executive regions of the brain. This forces us to slow down, identify, and articulate the numerous worries, ideas, and to-dos floating around in our heads. The process of extracting mental clutter converts it from passive noise competing for our attention into output that's out of our minds and onto paper. So when I start journaling, a lot of times it helps me get all those racing thoughts out onto the paper and it allows me to look at them and see what I'm actually thinking. Journaling clears valuable brain space like a mental tidy up before each day. It frees up greater cognitive resources for priority setting, intense focus, creative problem solving, and engaging with upcoming tasks in a centered, intentional way. Various studies have shown that journaling can also lower levels of stress hormones like cortisol our brains don't really know that we aren't speaking to somebody else uh, because it's it's really like talking about it and, and working through something or, or getting a song out of your head. That is what helps your brain move on to, to other more productive things. By transferring worries from short-term to long-term memory, anxieties no longer loom large enough to disrupt our flow states. Instead of facing the workday feeling scattered and overwhelmed, journaling each morning helps clarify your perspectives it sets the stage for tapping into that optimal focus zone so that all your energy can go where it's needed most. I could journal, I should journal. Maintaining focus can be achieved by properly prioritizing your tasks each day. 
Often, we tend to let lesser concerns or more enjoyable activities take over, which can leave us feeling unproductive. To overcome this, a highly effective approach is to eat the frog by tackling your most challenging task first thing in the morning. It comes from a story by Mark Twain, by the way, where he said if the first thing you do in the, each morning is to eat a live frog, you'll have the satisfaction of knowing that's probably the worst thing that's going to happen to you all day long. And your frog is your biggest, ugliest task. So we say, do the worst first. We all have certain duties or projects that we would rather avoid. These naughty frogs seem impossible to motivate ourselves to start. Whether it's sorting through a messy inbox, making difficult phone calls, or chipping away at a complex report. However, getting them out of the way up front is valuable for focus and productivity. Our willpower is at its strongest in the morning. So using that reserve to power through an undesirable but essential frog leverages our dwindling self-control as the day wears on for more enjoyable work. Knocking out your top priority also provides an immediate boost by crossing it off your list of looming tasks. Seeing quick wins like that builds intrinsic motivation to keep the momentum going. Once important resolutions are handled, lower stakes concerns no longer gnaw at the edges of your attention. The peace of mind of knowing your heaviest lifting is done allows full immersion in other responsibilities that are much easier. Start your day by devouring that daunting frog, and you will set yourself up beautifully for optimized focus all day long. Many times, we cannot control our work environment, but making small changes to our physical space can significantly impact our ability to focus. Some research shows that open floor plans and offices can reduce productivity by over 15%, Due to constant distractions. Another very interesting piece of research done with about 40,000 individuals looked at what impact working in an open plan office uh, had for them and what they found was people in open plan offices complained that they were significantly more prone to distraction and being taken away from being able to focus at work. If you work in a shared workspace, locating yourself further from colleagues in high traffic areas Printers or other noise sources can create a buffer. Even putting on some headphones with ambient noise or music can block interruptions more than you realize. When working from home, having a dedicated workspace away from common living areas helps separate work time from family or downtime. It can be a spare room, a corner, or even outdoors. Just removing yourself physically from distractions boosts focus. Feng Shui principles can also help improve focus and concentration. For example, using bright, indirect light instead of harsh fluorescence can support cognitive performance and circadian rhythms. Adding potted plants to your workspace can also be beneficial as it adds oxygen and visual interest without being distracting. Choosing warm, soothing colors like top or light green for your walls can invoke calmness and relaxation, while cooler hues can stimulate alertness. Decluttering both physical and digital spaces can help reduce feelings of being overwhelmed and improve focus. Customizing your workspace aesthetically can subconsciously prime your environment for productivity and focus, but it's important to do so in a way that brings you joy rather than stress. So changing that environment of your workspace will open the energy of your brain to be open-minded, to find solutions, to have concentration. By thoughtfully curating your workspace, you can create a personalized focus zone that is tailored perfectly to your needs. This simple change can make concentrating on important tasks much easier. To cultivate focus endurance, it's critical to remove constant triggers that drain your mental reserves. Going offline or using apps to block email and notifications during specified hours can give your brain a much needed break. Even though urgent items may still come through, this can help reduce non-time-sensitive distractions that can disrupt concentration. Consistency is key when it comes to improving focus and concentration. Like physical training, mental fortitude can only be strengthened through continuous practice. <laughs> Making small changes to your routine every day can help wire new routines into your neurology over time. Jotting notes one day and then dropping the habit yields minimal impact compared to long-term commitment. That's it for today's video. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. Thanks for watching and consider watching our other videos right here.